Very happy to present on stage Gloria Duomo. She is a student, photographer, sculptor, intern, and the, 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 the phrase that catched my, my eye in her biography is living, that she's living her life uh, trying to find and build the best version of herself starting from within. Gloria Duomo. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'll start by explaining what my talk is about. And I'll start by saying that we are tech. Uh, we are tech because we build technologies uh, as developers, as UX designers, uh, or anything, any way that we contribute to technology. And because of that, we, the humans, make tech. Without us, tech won't exist. Uh, therefore, when part of us struggles, the whole of the tech community struggles. And that's why I gave this title, The Struggle of Tech. Uh, and what I will talk about is how to learn difficult things, things that we would like to avoid and never have to learn in our lives. Because at some point, every one of us needs to learn something that is difficult. And if you're afraid of something though, that makes it a bit harder for you to want to learn it. So this talk will help you find ways you can uh, overcome your fear and learn something that is hard for you in tech or even in another aspect of your life. That's why I call it feeling better as a learner because part of it is feeling better as you are learning that thing. So let me start first by giving some background about me because that will give some depth to my talk. I'm a computer engineering student at Piraeus University of Applied Sciences, which is in Greece. And currently, I'm part of a program called Mozilla Tech Speakers, where Mozilla supports speakers that talk about the open web or things that support, uh, topics that support um, Mozilla's mission. Um, through that program, I've been able to give talk at different places, starting at 2015 uh, fall. I've given a talk at countries such as London and Brussels, and I've also been able to uh, get a lot of training in uh, public speaking and also in leadership at places such as Singapore and uh, Berlin. So I'm very thankful of them and uh, for giving me that opportunity. I'm also a mentor and volunteer at a place called Seven Cups of Tea, and there what we do is we uh, it's a platform that supports people to maintain their mental health through a skill called active listening. Um, and that, my involvement in that made me want to search more about psychology in order to be able to help people. So part of my talk will have um, some aspects of psychology because the more I learn about it, the more I'm able to help other people feel better about themselves or maintain their mental health. I would like to say a big thank you for Jack and Con organizers for uh, bringing me here today and giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you. I'm very grateful for that. And you can find out more about me at my LinkedIn and my personal website. Uh, part of my journey also after Mozilla was to do several other internships. I did one at Microsoft and then one at Google. And those places helped me build up my skills in order to gain more experience. So now let's move on about how it all began. What am I going to talk about exactly? I'll start with saying that I started learning how to code uh, at university. So that was around 18 years old, 19 years old. And before then, I had absolutely no experience with coding. So the first day that I went to university, uh, a professor started saying things like, um, this is a procedure, this is a function, this is pseudocode and different type of technical keywords, nothing made sense to me because I had no experience and I thought that here is where I'm coming to learn those things, so why don't they explain those things? But even so, I just did the best that I can and did very well at school. Some professors saw me as a very good student and um, I kept doing well, but then I did a wrong decision and that wrong decision was seek advice from the wrong people. 
And how did I know that I, I took advice from the wrong people? Because the decision that I took from, based on that advice affected my life in a negative way. So at some point, I used to take subjects that were ahead of my year because I always used to pass the subjects that were in my year. So I used to take subjects that are ahead of my year. And one of them got removed from the curriculum. So then I was told you should switch the grade that you got in that subject because it doesn't exist anymore in our program with that of another uh, subject. So then I asked different students, what should I switch it with? And a lot of students told me, algorithms and data structures. And I had absolutely no clue about what that was. And most of them told me that it's uh, difficult, it's hard, even to pass it, they cheated or uh, it was very hard for them. So then few people told me, no, don't switch it with that. That is very fundamental for a software engineer. You should learn that. But I just thought the majority might be the correct. So let me just switch it with that. So I went along my years and I never studied algorithms and data structures till I wanted to do an internship. And then suddenly I started seeing it as a requirement at all the software engineering roles. And then I thought, okay, since it's needed, I will learn it myself. But then I had developed a phobia. I was afraid of it. And whenever I tried to learn it, nothing made sense to me. I will give up to it. And for over two years, I avoided doing software engineering interviews, even if I got the interview, because I was afraid of getting myself into the place where I need to solve all these coding questions. So now I'll talk to you about how did I got out of this fear? or how am I coming out, because it's still a process, but there are some things that help me get out of this, and I believe that it can help you get out of a struggle that you have in learning something, whether it's a programming language like Python, or maybe something like machine learning, or even driving a car. The important thing is having a, a strong mind. Having a strong mind, there is a quote that, uh, a quote from a Roman poet that says, a healthy mind in a healthy body. Because when you have a healthy mind, you ensure that your body is healthy because the thoughts that you think are healthy, and therefore you want to give the best for yourself, so then you do healthy things. So it's very important to start with a strong mind, and to get a strong mind, some people have it uh, by default, but other people have to build it. And uh, along that line and that journey of trying to figure out why, why am I afraid of this? Why things that don't make sense? I know that I, I have some intelligence, why? I figure out that in general programming is very similar to learning a spoken language. Here I'm showing an image of a mountain because uh, learning a, physical, a natural language is like climbing a mountain. You first start as a beginner, let's say level A1, uh, point one, which takes about 24 hours to get to that level. And then as you keep climbing the mountain, things get harder. Uh, you, but as long as you keep moving, you get to another level. And that might take about 100 hours of you studying that language. You get to level A1, finally. And after many hours of climbing that mountain, you might get to the top of it, which then you are advanced and everything makes sense to you. Things are very easy to learn. And by then, though, you have spent about 600 hours learning that specific language. And in programming, I've realized that it takes time. In the beginning, things might not make sense, but the more you keep up with it, the more things start making sense and the more easier it gets. So one thing that is very important is setting healthy goals. Because if we set healthy goals, then um, we make sure that we encourage ourselves to keep trying and not give up. By setting healthy goals, I mean setting goals that make sense. For example, you can't say that I want to learn machine learning by tomorrow and I'll get a job in machine learning by next week. You might say that, of course, but it just won't work except if you have some supernatural type of uh, magic. If you have that, let me know because I want to know how to get some of that. But if you don't have that, then it takes time, so you have to set a goal that is reasonable. And to set a goal that is reasonable, it has to be rational. And in order to keep, to stick with that goal, you have to have values. And values are, why are you doing this? Why do I want to learn algorithms? Because I want to get a job as a software engineer or a programmer, and I need it. So that's why I want to learn it. And because I think that if I learn it, it will make me smarter. 
having the values helps you remember why you are trying to learn that thing whenever you feel like giving up. So now this is uh, an image I found from a software developer that wrote about why learning to code is so hard. So he made this uh, specific diagram to explain how his experience has been going from absolute beginner to job ready. And he starts saying that in the beginning, you're very excited to learn things. Uh, things seems, okay, this is easy. You're in a hand-holding honeymoon phase. Everything seems nice. But then suddenly, as you learn more, you get into a cliff of confusion. Something doesn't make sense. And then the more things don't make sense, you get into a place of despair. And you stay there for a while. Some people at that point give up. But if you keep up with it and keep trying more and more, then you get into an upswing of awesome and things start making sense. You get an aha moment. Things are getting easier and you learn more and more stuff and then eventually you reach a place where you feel that you are job ready and then you apply for the job. You might fail a few times in the beginning but then eventually you get the job. And here we see that the more our competence increases, the more our confidence also increases. So now back to the thing that I said. I said that I was afraid of learning algorithms. And whenever I started learning it, I was like, okay, this makes sense, I'm going well. Then when something didn't make sense, I was like, okay, what do I do? Try to ask people if it doesn't make sense. I then give up for a while, for some months, and this happened for like two years. And I got some uh, software engineering interviews, but then I told the recruiter that I'm not ready right now, please. Uh, if I'm ready, I'll contact you later on. Because I was scared. Why was I avoiding this? Why was I struggling to learn it? And now I took a lot of time to figure that out and actually found something that made sense, something that explained to me why am I afraid. And it might explain to you why you are afraid of learning something as well. So the thing that I figured out was heavy and learning, and it's something that um, uh, was brought by Donald Hebb, which was very much involved in uh, psychoneurology. So the thing that he said was that um, neurons that fire together wire together. That means if two neurons uh, fire together, they wire together, as I said earlier. But in a deeper level, it means, for example, let's say someone is afraid of driving a car because they want we're in an accident. So that means, let's say for example, we have a neuron in the brain that is associated with the word car and a neuron in the brain that is associated with the word pain or fear. So when the person was in that car, they were all right with it because they were never in the accident, things seemed easy, uh, everything went fine. But then as soon as they got hit and got into that accident, that person neuron that is associated with the word car and the neuron that is associated with the word or the feeling with the feeling pain or fear fired at the same time because it's painful to be in an accident so at, as soon as those two neurons fire at the same time they wire together and therefore whenever someone gets into a car they start relieving those feelings that they had in the accident sometimes because their brain has associated the word car and, or the object car and the feeling of fear and pain. So that made me understand that of why that I had those feelings of fear with algorithms. Because students told, started telling me it's very hard, um, it didn't make sense to me, I needed to cheat to pass it and all those type of things. I didn't knew that it was affecting my psychological state or how I view that subject. So my brain connected that algorithms with uh, very hard, uh, scary, and all those type of things. And uh, till I understood that, nothing made sense to me. But then as soon as I learned about heavy and learning, things started making sense to me. But now you might be thinking, does it end there? Can't we undo this thing? And yes, we can undo that. It doesn't happen in an instance. It takes time. But here comes something called anti and learning. And anti and learning means that for example, you expose the person to the thing that they fear in a safe manner so that they build up their confidence about it and um, they don't fear anymore about that thing. So that is called, I'll call it that as reframing and exposure therapy. 
So that means, for example, the person with the car, we let the person ride cars that hopefully won't get into an accident or start riding things that uh, don't trigger the fear in the person that much. And after a while after, of riding the car for a lo very long time, they realize that the fear is no more there because now they feel confident that the chances of getting in an accident again are not that many. So then their neuron that was once connected with uh, pain start losing its power. So after a while, that specific connection um, goes away. There's no more the connection between pain and car. So now when I get into the car, I'm no more scared of it. I, I see it as a normal part of my life that doesn't cause me any stress. So that is anti-habian anti learning and also called exposure therapy in another way. It is exposing yourself to what you fear in a gentle and safe manner uh, in order to reinforce the positive feelings that you once had about that specific thing. So then, now I have some um, beneficial thoughts that helped me during my learning process. One of them is do not be afraid of going against the grain. For example, when I was learning algorithms, people tell me code a lot of problems, solve a lot of problems, that's all I can tell you. But for me, I tried to do that, it didn't work because if you don't really understand what you're trying to solve, no matter if people tell you solve many problems, it won't make sense. So I did exactly the opposite of what people told me to not do. I looked at the solutions. I started by that. Because if the solutions don't make sense to you, then the problem itself won't make sense to you. So looking at the solutions and then trying to solve them yourself, um, I realized that helped me uh, learn this thing in a safer way and it started making me feel less afraid of it because now things started, suddenly started making sense. Another thing to remember is that rumination and worry don't work. Worrying about something takes a lot of your time that you could give on improving on it. So avoiding worrying is one of the best things that you can do. And one thing that you could try for that is to have a specific time you call worry time. For example, if you're working in a personal project and you are very worried about it because things don't work. Instead of worrying all day about it, you can set a time from 1 to 2 p.m. This is the time that I've set to worry about this specific project. And after that, whenever I worry, I'll tell myself to refocus back on the project and wait for the next day to worry again about it. Another thing is avoiding or limiting access, access to harmful or negative people. You might see people tell you that you're just not made for technology. You're just not made for to learn this specific thing you're trying to learn. That's how humans are. Just come to terms with it. If it's something that you want to learn, you just have to forget about that and try anyways because you will never really know if you haven't tried your best in learning it. And one more thing from this slide is eliminated distractions. When you're learning something that you don't like, as soon as you see something that is distracting, that thing will capture your attention instantly because that thing to you will seem more attractive than sitting down and learning something that scares you or makes you feel bad. So eliminating distractions is one thing that will be very beneficial for you to do because you give no chances to yourself to wander around or to put off what you are trying to learn for another time. And then Something else that helps me is focus on what you have control over. There are some things that are in your control, some things that are out of your control, and some things that are a bit in your control. That means partially in your control. You have to identify if the thing you're trying to learn is in your control, and if it is, focus on that. If it's not, then you can't do anything about that, so try to find something else to do. Another thing that helped me is viewing failure differently and internal, internalizing my success. Because when I did good, I often uh, neglected it and thought, okay, it doesn't matter, it's not important, it's not significant. But whenever I did wrong or I failed at something, I then start telling myself, look what you did, you fail again. When are you going to uh, do well at this thing? You are always failing at it. Maybe just give up on it. So instead of reinforcing those negative thoughts, reinforce the positive ones. 
because that those are the thoughts that will help you keep moving on and keep trying one more thing is accepting become accepting of social certainty there are many things that you don't know and as a new learner of something by default you have to think of I don't know these things. There are many things that might not make sense to me, and that's okay because I'm learning. And if I knew those things, then I wouldn't need to learn that thing. So it's okay to not understand some things or be uncertain at some point of your journey. And the last thing that I would like to give from those thoughts that helped me was to not forget to be appreciative of uh, our support network. There are people that will have your back that will encourage you, that will cheer you when you don't feel like cheering yourself. And those people are to be appreciated because they don't need to do that. They don't owe you anything, but they do it anyway because they want to see you succeed. So it is very important to uh, appreciate those people. And now uh, I have a call of action to you to let your success story unfold try to learn something that is very hard for you, something that scares you, something that you feel it's better to avoid if you could. And let me know how it went, if you like to. I hope that these tips help you. As I said, heavy on learning, helps you understand why you're afraid of some things. And then going against the grain, help you figure out ways on to make learning that thing easier for you. You don't need to follow what other people are doing. You can create your own path. So that's what I have to say today. I wish you a great day ahead. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> so any questions or? Hi, uh, thanks Hi. for the talk. Um, one of the things you mentioned about finding people to give you good advice mm. is to not surround yourself with people who give you bad advice. How do you identify what bad advice is when you're in the middle of the, of, of, of the situation yourself and you don't know how to evaluate whether you've got bad advice? Yeah, I didn't say that we should surround ourselves with people that gives us bad advice because those people might be good people. It's not that you don't need them. I said try to avoid negative people. Oh. Giving bad advice doesn't mean that the person is negative, but it just means that uh, they maybe did it uh, without uh, wanting to. But the point is, how do I identify people that give good advice? The best people to have gone to ask for advice were my professors, because they understand that subject. They've been teaching it for many years. They know about it. There may be people, like some of the few students that told me it's very fundamental, you should learn it, that uh, could give me a good advice about it. But to be 100% sure, it's good to ask someone that is more experienced because that is the way that you know that these people have been doing it for many years. They know what I'll need in the future for my career. So these are the people that I should give more uh, attention to or take their advice strongly. So uh, to recap that is to seek people, both people that might give you bad advice because you want to share all of the options, but you should try to find experts, people that have been there for a while, people in the field, to help you conclude on what is the best thing to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the talk. Um, can uh, you talk a bit more about the Mozilla speakers program that you mentioned? That sounds really cool. Okay. Um, Mozilla Tech Speakers is a program that happens every year, I guess, they, rec they recruit new people, where you apply for it, and then you go through a series of training in public speaking or things that are technical, for example, A-frames, uh, web VR, uh, technologies that Mozilla now is actively promoting or working on. And um, once you get there, you also get like homeworks to do, and in the end, once you finish that cohort, where other tech speakers also teach you about that, you get into a place where you graduate if you do all of these things well, and then you can then start, they encourage you to start sending call for papers, call for papers to different conferences. And if you get selected, then they support you as they can, like financially, or if you need help with slides, or if you need anything to, in order to be able to attend that conference. So in short, yeah, that is uh, Mozilla Tech Speakers. And if you'd like to learn more, you can catch me later and I'll tell you more about it. 
There's time for one more question, if anyone has. I was just wondering, uh, uh, you showed us that you did a little bit with Mozilla Tech something. Uh, mm. uh, do you have anything to do with Django? I mean, I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, the internship that I did with Mozilla, the first internship that I did, it exposed me to Django because it was built on, built on Django. And it's a platform called Air Mozilla that airs different videos of Mozilla. So then it's when I started getting involved with Django and then getting involved uh, with learning Python. So that is how I started getting involved with that side of technology. But this talk in specific, I wanted it to be about tech in general, but someone could use it to learn Python or Django if they are scared of it. So I think it's beneficial to everyone. Okay. Thank you everyone.